Some of the scariest weapons in military history are biological and chemical agents, like the mustard gas used on the battlefield in World War I. It's even more terrifying when these weapons kill innocent civilians. Let's go back 40 years to an incident that left dozens dead in a town in Siberia. The question, what was happening at the secret base known as Compound 19? You're looking at the graves of the victims, people whose lives were cut short, people whose deaths were covered up, people whose story can only now be told. It was May 1979. Several residents in the Cold War city of Sverdlovsk turn up at hospitals with disturbing symptoms. They have fever, they're vomiting, and they're unsure what's happening. At first, they think it might be a polio outbreak. Within days, dozens are dead. Authorities quickly release an explanation to calm the city. The Soviet government initially tried to say that the residents who had died were killed from eating spoiled meat. Okay, it happens. In fact, in 2017, an outbreak of listeria from contaminated deli meat killed 216 people in South Africa. But infected meat would kill people in a random pattern. These deaths occurred following a straight line that just happened to match the prevailing wind direction. That means that whatever is killing them is airborne. That raises the possibility of bioweapons. But hang on. The Soviets agreed with the US and other nations to abandon bioweapons programs in 1972. Could they still be developing them in secret? You betcha. In fact, in 1979, their agency known as Biopreparat is building the largest biological warfare program in history. And the city of Sverdlovsk is actually a secret city, built just for that deadly purpose. Sverdlovsk was built specifically to explore and develop biological weapons. Even the people that lived there didn't necessarily know where they were. They didn't show up on a map. They were completely hidden. You weren't really allowed to tell people where you lived. You weren't allowed to visit with anybody. Once you went to a place like Sverdlovsk, that was your home, likely for the rest of your life. I really wonder how bad an accident at one of these secret cities would have to be for the Soviets to cop to it as a safety issue. The Chernobyl meltdown could have contaminated the drinking water in Europe for like a thousand years, and they kept that a secret as long as they could. And that wasn't even military weaponry, much less illegal military weaponry. So I want to find out, was this some kind of crazy treatment-resistant superbug? And what happened to it? The biological weapon being manufactured at Compound 19 was none other than anthrax. Anthrax is an incredibly deadly bacteria and as a biological weapon is extremely dangerous. But how did it leak out? What went wrong at this facility was the scientists have to replace the air filters ever so often. And what happened was the scientists took the air filters out, but they forgot to put them back in. And then, over the weekend, 10 kilograms of anthrax was released out through that unfiltered vent. And the wind picked them up in just the right way to deliver these spores to the population. And despite dozens of people dying from anthrax exposure, it's actually far from the worst case scenario. And they're actually lucky because if the wind had been blowing in the opposite direction, hundreds of thousands of people could have died. Ingesting naturally occurring anthrax has a 60% fatality rate, roughly twice that of smallpox. Weaponized anthrax has a 90% fatality rate. Worst case scenario, somebody would weaponize anthrax and modify it so that the vaccine wouldn't work against it or that it could be contagious between people. Right now, anthrax in its original form only infects that first person. And the Soviets had an entire secret city engineering this stuff? Actually, they had more than 50 cities. In closed sites across the USSR, scientists were working to weaponize the viruses that caused the bubonic plague, smallpox, legionnaire's disease, and even a close cousin to Ebola. How do we know all this? Because in 1992, the Russians finally copped to it. It isn't until 1992, when the Soviet Union collapses, that Boris Yeltsin comes out and admits that this was a Soviet military program. 
To usher in a new era of transparency, Russia signs a new pact forbidding bioweapons development. So whatever happened to the anthrax from Sverdlovsk? All of the spores that were in this factory were destroyed, covered in bleach, and then they were buried on Resurrection Island in the Aral Sea. This was thought to be the safest way to dispose of them. Is the Russian military living up to its renewed promise to abandon bioweapons? Maybe not. In 2006, former KGB agent and vocal Putin critic Alexander Litvinenko was poisoned with polonium, a rare, radioactive bioweapon. Also in the UK in 2018, Sergei Skripal, a former Russian military officer turned double agent for the British, was poisoned, along with his daughter Yulia, with a bioagent. So the Russian bioweapon program may be alive and well, and still super secret. In 2016, biologists were able to test tissue from the victims and map the genome of the anthrax that killed them. Good news, it was not re-engineered into some crazy superbug. It could be treated if you caught it early enough. So it's just your everyday, run-of-the-mill, super-deadly anthrax. I guess it's better than the alternative. You're not wrong.